and welcome to this video on alcohols. Um, this is for OCRA. My name is Chris Harris and I'm from AllerieTutors.com and like I say this video is just a revision video so it's just going to do a quick overview of the alcohols topic specifically for OCRA. Um, the slides I'm going to use here you can purchase. If you just click on the link in the description box below this video um, you'll be able to get hold of them there. I'm um, great for things like um, revision on the move, you can put them on your tablet and your smartphone, uh, you can print them off, write notes, etc. So, um, pretty useful, I think. So, yeah, okay, so like I say, these are specifically for OCRA and they match these specification points and um, from the syllabus that you can see here. So, useful if you do an OCRA. Okay, so let's have a look at an introduction to alcohols because we need to know obviously what these things are. So alcohols have the functional group OH, that's a hydroxyl group. Um, that's its homologous series and it's got the general formula of CNH2N plus 1 OH. Okay, so make sure you can use that formula as well. They come in different types. Um, the first one is a primary alcohol. Normally we give it the little one degree symbol. Um, so that doesn't mean temperature, that means primary. Um, <laughs> which is kind of obvious, I suppose. Um, so you've got your uh, your R, which is your alkyl group. Um, this is R1. Um, and you can see here, this is primary because we've got an alcohol attached to a carbon, which is attached to one of the carbon, which makes it a primary alcohol, which is this one here. Okay, so this is uh, an example. Could be butanol. Um, you can get secondary alcohols as well. Here's a secondary one. So the alcohol is bonded to a carbon, which is bonded to two of the carbons. This is a secondary alcohol, so butan 2 ol will be classed as a secondary. And tertiaries, as you might have guessed, is basically an alcohol bonded to a carbon, which is bonded to three other carbon groups. So an example would be 2 methyl propan 2 ol which is this example here. These are the, by the way, these are the structural formulas um, of, the, of the example that we put on there. Okay. So we need to know about some properties of these things, and solubility is one of them. Okay, so alcohols, um, so we've got these OH bond, remember, on alcohols. Um, it's polar, okay? We have a delta negative on that oxygen, which means that the electrons are pulled towards this electronegative uh, oxygen in the covalent bond that's attached to the carbon, okay? So because these alcohols are polar, they actually interact with water molecules. So these are your alcohols here. These are... These are examples of methanol, uh, and this is water here. Now, these will hydrogen bond with the water. The lone pair on the oxygen on the alcohol will form a hydrogen bond with the hydrogen on the water. That's because the delta negative charge on the oxygen is attracted to the delta positive on the hydrogen, okay? Uh, and this is a hydrogen bond. So, because these interactions are there, this allows the alcohol to dissolve in water. However, this can only apply, obviously, to shorter chain alkanes because this bit doesn't dissolve in water it's not polar so the more of this bit you've got in other words the hydrocarbon bit the less likely your alcohol will dissolve so things like methanol and ethanol and propan one ol will dissolve but as soon as you start getting into longer hydrocarbon chains they become insoluble so yes that's what basically we're saying so the longer the hydrocarbon chain the more insoluble it is this bit remember is non-polar um, it reduces the interaction that water can make with the alcohol because most of the molecule is non-polar, so it won't dissolve. Okay, alcohols, they can also hydrogen bond with each other, so that's pretty useful. Um, and hydrogen bonding is the strongest type of intermolecular force, remember. So the alcohols have a higher boiling point um, than molecules of a similar relative mass with no hydrogen uh, bonding. For example, alkanes. So if we take the similar, um, similar, hydrogen, uh, similar mass of an alcohol and compare it to an alkane, an alcohol will have a higher boiling point because its ability to hydrogen bond with each other, whereas a standard alkane can only do your um, your temporary or your induced dipole-dipole, okay? So this makes alcohols, they're not as volatile really as alkanes. Okay, so let's see how we can make a halo alkane from these, okay? So halo alkanes are made, or also known as halogeno alkanes. They are made from alcohols via a substitution reaction, okay? So if we take our halo alkane or halogeno alkane, uh, basically these are made when an alcohol is reacted with a halide iron source. So for example, like a salt, like sodium bromide. Uh, and we add an acid catalyst, which is sulfuric acid, okay? So let's have a look. Um, Here's your reaction here. This is butan 2 ol Basically, if we react that with a salt, which is sodium bromide, we form 
2 bromobutane you can see here. Uh, obviously we have an acid catalyst, sulfuric acid is used as your catalyst to help this go. You form your haloarcane, um, notice it's just a straight swap alcohol for haloarcane. Uh, and we form sodium hydroxide, this is alkaline. So our pH should become more alkaline if we test that with a pH meter. Okay, dehydration of alcohol. So we can um, make alkenes from alcohols and this is pretty straightforward by just dehydrating them. Dehydration means the removal of water. Okay, so it's eliminating water from the alcohol and produce the alkene. That's why we call them dehydration. So the reaction involves the use of an acid catalyst. So again, sulfuric or phosphoric you could use. Basically, you have your ethanol there. You use your acid. You form ethene from ethanol and you form water. You literally, all you're doing is just removing water from ethanol and you form ethene. So it's relatively straightforward. Alkenes are really um, useful because we can use polymers. Uh, we can make polymers from them and these are used to make plastics. So again, it's another useful reaction of making plastics. Um, and for non-primary alcohol chains, longer than three carbons, okay, you can get different positional isomers of alkenes. And you may also get some EZ as well. So please check to see if your alkene that you've drawn does have EZ. If it does, they may be asking you to name the isomer that's formed. Is it E? Is it an E alkene or is it a Z alkene? So make sure you check that. Okay, it's really important. You've got to just kind of make an awareness of that. Okay, so... Dehydration of non-primary alcohols can lead to three different alkenes. Okay, so let's have a look at this example. So the double bond can be formed either side of the carbon that did have the OH, which is the hydroxyl group on. So you can see here we've got butan 2 ol as our example. Okay, now if we add sulfuric acid to this, you can see that we get our double bond here on the left. Now we can get the double bond there. Remember there's the OH, we can get the double bond forming there. Or we can get the double bond forming on the other side. And you can see the double bonds here on the end. And here it is in the middle. So we've got two different um, isomers of each other. These are positional isomers. Okay. And just check for your um, just check for your uh, EZ, like I say. So you can see this one won't display any EZ because we've got two hydrogens on the same carbon. So that one's fine. But this one will. Okay. So you can have the two hydrogens on the same side which would make it Z-butuene, or you can have a formation where the hydrogen is now on the opposite side, or the methyls, uh, and that would form E-butuene, okay? So make sure you can differentiate, check to see if your alkene does have EZ, if it does, write them down. So basically, this reaction here produces three different alkenes, butuene, which is that one, uh, Z-butuene, which is that one, and E-butuene, which is that one. So we form three different alkenes made. Okay, so make sure you're aware of that. Okay, um, combustion of alcohols. So obviously they're a fuel, we can burn them, and we can make electricity from them. So they burn redly, they have this lovely light blue flame when you burn um, alcohols, it's almost colourless, uh, depending on the length of the hydrocarbon chain, of course. So when burnt, they react with oxygen, they form carbon dioxide and water like other fuels do. And um, because we're burning them with oxygen, obviously, uh, the alcohol is being oxidised. So you can see here, there's your um, ethanol there, for example. We ignite it, reacts with oxygen, it forms carbon dioxide and water. Make sure it's balanced and look at your state symbols. Alcohols, they can be oxidized by using a mild oxidizing agent like potassium dichromate. Um, this one actually is a bit more useful because we get the products produced from a mild oxidizing agent. Uh, we can use, obviously, carbon dioxide and water are pretty limited of what we can use them for. So let's have a look. So, like I say, they can be oxidized to aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids by dichromate, which is a mild oxidizing agent. Okay, so alcohols are oxidized using potassium dichromate, K2Cr2O7. This is a mild oxidizing agent, so it's reduced itself. Okay, so this is what it's reduced from. So it goes from dichromate, which is orange, Cr2O7, 2 minus, that's a dichromate ion, and it goes to green, which is the chromium ion. CR3 plus, so you can see chromium has been reduced from here, from plus seven to plus three, so it's a reduction, okay? So if it's reduced itself, it's an oxidizing agent. So we get a color change. Okay, so primary alcohols, these can be oxidized to aldehydes, and then they can go to carboxylic acids. So if we have a look here, there's your aldehyde there, 
It has a carbonyl group, C double bond O and a CH on the end carbon. Uh, it's CH3, CH2, CHO. So it ends in al, aldehyde. These can be oxidized further though to a carboxylic acid. So these end in oic acid. These have again the carboxylic acid, your carbonyl group and a COH bond as well at the end carbon. So this is a carboxylic acid. Secondary alcohols, these can be oxidized to ketones. So there's your ketone there. Ends in own. So have a C double bond. Again, it's got a carbonyl group on the inner carbon, CH3, CO, CH3. So you can see primaries are oxidized to aldehydes, then carboxylic acids. Secondaries are oxidized to ketones. And primaries can't be oxidized using um, your potassium dichromate. So the only way we can um, burn them is by, uh, is the only way we can oxidize them is by burning them. Okay, so the oxidation of alcohols. We need to know the kit that we use because this is the practical technique. Distillation and reflux is used in the oxidation of alcohols. Primary alcohols are oxidized, but the products produced are dependent on the method that we use. So you've got to be really careful with this one, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to represent our oxidizing agent as O in a square bracket. So let's have a look at this one. This is a primary alcohol, okay? And these will produce an aldehyde, then a carboxylic acid. However, it's really difficult just to get this aldehyde here when we're just heating it in a boiling tube. So we have to use a special method for this. So there's the alcohol, we're gonna oxidize it, and you form your aldehyde. So we have to remove the aldehyde as soon as it's formed. If we don't, it will re react with more oxidizing agent and turn into a carboxylic acid. So in order to remove it before it reacts further, we use distillation, okay? The aldehyde is quite lucky because it has a lower boiling point than the alcohol. So the first bit, as soon as we get the vapor formed, that must be the aldehyde and we extract that off. So if we want to go further though, if we want to form a um, carboxylic acid, then we have to use reflux and we use an excess of an oxidizing agent. So basically we heat it up, your aldehyde would form first, cool and condense against the condenser, drop back down, react with more um, oxidizing agent and then turn into a carboxylic acid. So this is why when we use it, if we just want this, we want to have to remove that first. But this one, we're not that bothered because we just want to produce a carboxylic acid. So basically the reflux allows strong heating, so we can heat it up from underneath without losing your volatile compounds. They don't escape anywhere, they condense and drop back down. Um, and so it allows them to react. So refluxes are really useful for that. Okay, secondary alcohols are oxidized to ketones. Um, it's really difficult to oxidize ketones further. Um, they don't go any further than that, so we only produce one product. Again, we're gonna represent our oxidizing agent as O in a square bracket. So here's our secondary alcohol. Again, we're going to use our reflux setup, and we're going to oxidize. Um, we're going to oxidize this using our oxidizing agent. So your secondary alcohol will oxidize to a ketone, which is this one here. So in this case, this is propanol. Go into propanone, um, and basically we can do that when we react it with acidified potassium dichromate, which is our mild oxidizing agent, which is represented with a square bracket O. And that's it. That's your overview for alcohols for OCRA. Um, please support this channel by subscribing to it. You get all the updates and the new videos that I put up. If you just click on the middle button, uh, you'll be able to subscribe. And um, also just a reminder that if you uh, want a copy of these slides, you can purchase them. Just click on the link in the description box below this video. Right. Um, that's it. I'm off. See ya. Bye.